All right. Uh, yeah, mic check. Check, check. How are we sounding? Okay, it's February 12th today. And uh, I got this in the mail. So that's like 10 days from order. From China to Canada. Here we go. Let's unbox it. YouTube loves an unboxing. See what we get in here. This is three axis gimbal. Storm 32. Uh, it's with the frame and motors and everything. And it cost me 85 bucks. So what do we get? Now, when I ordered this, I noticed there was sort of two options. One had the picture of the gimbal hanging from its base, and the other had the picture of the gimbal uh, sitting on its base. So I went with that option because uh, that's what I plan to do with it. And I have a feeling that it'll be configured to uh, run with the base like down, like it is, like how it is sat on the table there. So uh, yeah, kind of like the instructions say, put a GoPro on it before you power it up. Came with a handy strap. Now we're just, you need the weight on there so it balances, so you can start it up and it won't uh, freak out. I think a lot of guys are getting um, caught up on these sort of first steps, because, you know, like, uh, this little machine came with no instructions, nothing, you know, no, I don't know, they, it, they don't include anything. So it's like we're kind of expected to know how it works, but you know, if you're trying to figure it out, it's not obvious. So I guess that's what this video is to help explain. All right, so you got a bit of time to expand on these details. So yeah, what I'm gonna do today is uh, like right now, uh, I just wanted to open the box and see what was inside there. So, I'm going to see if this GoPro balance is alright. And then, uh, in a minute, we're just going to power it up and see if it actually works um, as supplied. So, so that's kind of the plan. And then if it works as supplied, I want to look at the configuration. Uh, and I'm gonna have to leave links for you for the um, for the configuration software. It's all open source stuff. Thank you, Ollie and team. You guys are uh, pretty cool. And uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, just before we get into the deep end here, a uh, little explainer on how. Storm 32 uh, brushless gimbal controller uh, works or is it's basically uh, two parts so it's got a bigger board and that contains the motor drivers and uh, an IMU I call it IMU2 basically it detects its orientation it's like a gyro accelerometer etc and then there's a smaller board, and that is also an IMU. So there are these two accelerometer gyroscope uh, detectors that can sense their orientation and the rate of change they're going through. And between the both of them, uh, that allows the Storm 32 to do what it does. So keep that in mind. There's two. Uh, two IMU units. Uh, one is mounted to the camera and one is mounted in the base or basically uh, in the context of a car on the chassis. So you're going to hear me talk a lot about IMU2 uh, a little later in the video. So each IMU has its own calibration and uh, the IMU2 uh, does not come calibrated from the factory. So I'm gonna go through that process uh, towards the end of the video. Okay. 
uh, regarding the uh, overall format of this video. Uh, I'm just going to open it up and sort of take the steps I would normally do to sort of check the equipment and see how it's working. And then uh, start getting into more of the settings that I, I use to get the results I do. Um, this isn't really meant to be a definitive guide on the subject, but uh, I think there's a lot people can learn uh, from it, especially seeing some of the normal startup procedures and uh, just typical operation of the Storm 32. Okay, just another uh, minute or so of, uh, of uh, onboard footage here. All, all the onboard stuff I post, uh, unless I explicitly state it, is, uh, you know, unprocessed. Like, this is recorded straight out of my goggles uh, on the DJI system from a Vista Air unit. And uh, it's, it's, you know, all my stuff stabilized real time on the Storm 32, so... Um, yeah, so that being said, I just wanted to include that little statement about like the IMUs and different components of the gimbal because uh, we got to be on the same page if you're going to understand what it, I'm going on about in the rest of the video. Yeah, Ollie's a guy, uh, I don't know, in Germany, I think, that uh, developed this board and uh, made the whole thing open source. That's how we can get these uh, controller boards for uh, like 40 bucks from China. Right, so there is just measuring the motors to check the dimension because that will impact my frame design for my custom frames. And uh, they are, like I suspected, the flycat motors. They're 13 mils um, tall, I guess, and uh, it should work out well, so. Okay, so this is the first power up here, and um, you'll notice I keep myself ready to unplug it. So it's it's got a whole sequence of stuff it's gonna do uh, when you power it up. So first is it it sort of push puts itself in its startup position. So um, you know, and then it's gonna level itself. And then it's gonna beep a couple times, <clears throat> and then it's ready to go. So we're just gonna wait for the beeps here. And I'm just staying ready because after it beeps is when it would go crazy, potentially, like start dancing. But we got the beeps and looks like it's working fine. So I'm just gonna move it around a bit here and see yeah, see what it's doing. So the range of motion isn't super good on this frame. Um, and I can tell the way the gimbal is configured now, it's trying to hold the horizon level all the time and then it's gonna turn with the base. So that's fine, I don't know. Good as any other sort of default setup. Right, so let's get into the set up config software here and see more exactly what's going on and and yeah most of all i just wanted to see if the firmware like right off the bat it said firmware 051 in the documentation on the website i bought this gimbal from so you can see there the version of the gui software i have is 090 so the software has to match the firmware version of the gimbal board or else things aren't going to work. Okay, so we're going to connect it. You can see I had COM 8 and 9 there as available and that was without the gimbal plugged in. So we got our USB, kind of old school USB connector. We connect it up and now let's see which ports are available. And whatever the new one is, is the gimbal so we'll select that and then press connect so right we'll choose the uh, new com port that showed up and press connect yeah com 12. it's going to be different for every board 
but it'll be the one that wasn't there before. So this uh, has connected properly and you can see uh, the firmware version and things have started appearing in the QE to that indicate how the gimbal is set up. So all these fields in green here indicate, uh, the green indicates these are the current settings on the board right now. Right, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna end up flipping through all these tabs here and looking at how this board's set up. The software lets you save different configurations. So uh, I'm kind of getting excited here and, and looking at a lot of these values and thinking about changing some. But uh, first thing I should really do is, is save the configuration it, it came with. And we'll see that in a second. Yeah, so you can see there's a lot of different parameters to change here and um, it's important to know, you know, changing the things in the GUI doesn't necessarily change them on the board right away with some exceptions, but that's why you'll see if I change a few values in here, the field will go from green to gray uh, and that just indicates that that change hasn't been um, pushed up to the board yet. What I'm doing here is just taking a look at the IMU values. I see IMU2 is basically uncalibrated there. I had zeros across the top. Yeah, that's another thing, I don't know why they, they always come with that IMU2 not calibrated and, and not really configured to uh, contribute to the the gimbal's operation, but you can see there it's I mean, a YouTube configuration is off, and uh, I'd really rather have it on full. That's just how I've had better results, I guess. Um, so, again, pressing read to just undo my changes. And on that note, we're going to save the config before we make changes. Yeah, so settings, save to file, and then just save a file anywhere to uh, store your config. And that's just handy to do all the way along your tuning. So we know the gimbal works in this configuration, so we save that file, and uh, then we can feel a bit more free to uh, make some of these changes. So the first one uh, here, I'm gonna set it to pan, 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 and that just means it's not gonna hold the horizon anymore. It's gonna stay uh, uh, it's going to orient the camera to the base essentially and uh, okay you can see I'm writing the change and then setting store to EEPROM to make that change uh, permanent in the memory of the gimbal and then I'm gonna save this config as a new one because it's sort of where I'm playing around at so that's kind of my thought process there. So I've got my previous config and now I've got this sort of experimental one uh, that I'm working within. And, right, can't tell what I'm doing. Looks like we're gonna try giving her, giving her some power. And uh, I'll check this, but I'm pretty sure I set the IMU2 config to full in this uh, test as well. We're gonna see if that works. So, see if that works. Remembering that I also checked the IMU2 calibration and saw that it was completely uncalibrated. So, let's see what happens. Part of me wonders if people just don't maybe wait long enough for the startup to happen on these gimbals. Uh, it can take a good 30 seconds or, or a minute sometimes for the gimbal to start running. Um, and you can see there it's it's had a bit of a fail and I just unpower it quickly. Okay, let's test this. So I am U2 config off and we're gonna store that to EEPROM. So we again write and then store to EEPROM. And then we save a config file because, I don't know, we do that a lot. 
and we'll probably give it another power test here and see if that makes it run properly. We're really going to power it down. Disconnect everything. I have found that sometimes with too many sets of changes of, you know, I can get confused and it's good to just totally unpower the uh, gimbal now and again. So. so what do we got? Pan, pan, pan. It's a good little status monitor down at the bottom of the board. It can tell you what it's uh, sort of up to. State, start motor, you can see that in the uh, bottom. State is settle. And I just kind of quickly helped it get a little bit more level at the outset there, just physically moving it. So state is level. You're gonna see the gimbal start to level itself bit herky-jerky in the uh, pitch there. Don't know why. These boards all have a bit of character. Uh, right, state normal. So it should be running now. And, yep, there we go. Yeah, you can see we've switched it to pan, pan, pan now. It's it's not holding level anymore. The camera's pitched at some wonky angle. That's something we can solve later, but... Uh, right. This one's always good just to cover the bases. So it's the gimbal config tool. And this is going to primarily help you detect the board orientation. So... Uh, the Storm 32, the big board, the gimbal control board, uh, has a certain orientation that it knows it's in, and then the little PCB that's on the camera also has an orientation that it knows it's in. So this can help uh, set that. So the screen there says hold the camera level, get it sort, sort of leveled, I'm having trouble having it just hold its position, so I'm going to hold it myself. So hold it level and press continue. Then pitch the whole thing forward a certain amount, and you can see it's found the two orientations for those boards. I think it's 14 and 13 in this case. This was kind of tripping me out because I know here in the setup it says 14 and 3, so I'm wondering why is that different, but uh, it occurs to me that I don't actually know what direction is supposed to be forward on this board, so I'm just going to trust the process here, and if it says 14 and 13, well, you know, now I'm telling it how I want it set up, so... Uh, I want that direction to be sort of camera forward, etc. Then for the most part, it's going to ask you to have a battery connected for some of these steps. Um, and it's going to start going through some uh, processes to determine the motor direction. Uh, and the startup position. And then it's going to have me... Uh, help it with the yaw a little bit to make sure it gets uh, rotated uh, in the right direction, sort of looking left, right, like the pan. It's gonna need a little bit of help to get that square. And uh, then it's gonna store all those changes to the EEPROM. So yeah, when you make changes in the GUI, you have to uh, press right and that'll push the changes up into the board, but it won't have them in memory yet. So once you press right, you have to do settings, store to EEPROM, and then your changes are uh, will be persistent on the board. So you can unplug it, power it down, power it up, and your changes will, will stay there. And that's pretty common for like firmware programming type things, but uh, pretty weird for uh, if you haven't done that before, it's a bit of a strange, strange 
thing to wrap your head around, I guess. Right, so we've got our new gimbal config. So if you were to like remount the gimbal into a different car and you know, the boards were in a different orientation, you just, you know, the first thing I do is rerun that gimbal config tool. And it also has the benefit of like resetting your startup positions, etc. So that uh, it's like a little tune up. That's how I think of it. Setup slash tune up. So we've set our pan mode to pan, pan, pan. It's the camera is going to follow the orientation of uh, the base all the times, right? So if you aim the, the gimbal up, it's going to look up. So what I'm doing now, and you can see this familiar process, right? And then store to EEPROM and then save uh, the config file for our sort of test, test one. Now the parameters I was working with there, I was saying the pan pitch limiter, roll, roll pan limiter and yaw pan limiter. And what those do is they restrict the range of motion of the gimbal sort of uh, electronically because you don't want it moving so much that the frame hits itself or mechanically locks up because that will be um, sort of like an instant ish that'll be an issue for the gimbal it will glitch a little bit if that happens so that's one of the more important uh, parameters to work with there to make sure things work properly so uh, moving it around just to test it and see, you know, if I move it so much, will it hit, will the frame contact itself or will it reasonably not contact itself? So we're going to okay. fix this IMU2 problem here. So if you saw there on the calibrate accelerometer tab and I selected IMU2 and I pressed one point calibration and uh, I waited for the values to stabilize and I accepted those and now I'm pressing store calibration and that's going to write those values into into memory. No need to press write or store to EEPROM although I might do that just to be sure. Um, I believe the uh, yeah the calibrations there uh, for the IMUs are always just stored directly into into memory. Yeah, so the process there is uh, choose IMU2 and then uh, read from board. So you read the values from the board. And if you see the zero is all zeros, um, it means it's uncalibrated and you can run a one point calibration. And just read through the screens there. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And you accept the value and then uh, save, uh, yeah, store, then you'd press store calibration. And here I'm just testing that, uh, I guess it hasn't screwed anything up. So yeah, that's kind of interesting because uh, we saw under the setup tab when I turned the IMU2 configuration on to full, the gimbal failed before, and now we've calibrated IMU2 and let's see uh, if we turn that that on under the setup tab here here we go connect so imu2 is off let's switch it to full right and then store to eprom and then we're going to power it up and let's see if it uh, will behave itself now Okay, uh, yeah, three beeps says it's ready, and uh, seems like it's working just fine. Part of the documentation indicated that uh, with the IMU2 configured, the gimbal should be able to work at more extreme angles. So 
that's why I've always been kind of motivated to set that one up and it's interesting I didn't really know before this about having an uncalibrated IMU2 making that not work so kind of learning learning stuff uh, as we go here right and that's about uh, the majority of the things I wanted to test today I'm just gonna one more time power it up and and see that it works even after you know a complete reboot or total cold start 